Hey, I'd like to buy this scorpion. What kind is it? Asian forest scorpion. No, I mean, what species is it? Asian forest scorpion. Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. This video is all about updates. Um, one of the things that hopefully you might notice is better sound quality. Um, I got a little chunk of change from working the elections back in August and I decided I was going to do the responsible thing rather than spend it on tarantulas. I was going to buy equipment for my channel. And uh, one of the things that I purchased was a preamplifier for my DSLR. And the reason I did that was because Adobe Premiere or Adobe ran updates on Premiere and uh, they got rid of the old um, denoise or filter that I used to use to remove the extra noise from my audio and uh, they replaced it with a different one that removes noise but for some reason it does weird things to my audio it made it sound really tinny like I was talking through a megaphone or something and I was getting this weird warbling noise in the, in, in the recording as well so I really didn't like what it was doing so I figured I needed to do something so hopefully this preamplifier will take care of my issues and uh, you won't get that extra noise or weird stuff going on my in my audio another thing i purchased was this uh, little joby gorilla pod here and uh, I, I had put, been putting it off for a long time because I really couldn't see, I really couldn't justify paying that much money for a tiny tripod. But now that I have it in hand and I've used it, this thing's an amazing piece of equipment. It is a sturdy chunk of equipment here. And uh, it, I mostly purchased it for my DSLR so that I can take it on trips and have a small tripod that I can use. And it looks really funny with my little cheapy D, uh, camcorder right there. but. It is an awesome piece of equipment. I, now I wonder why I didn't do it before. Another update that I have is, um, you may remember in a previous video that I had purchased some um, praying mantis uthikas, and uh, two of them had emerged and I had one left and I had shown how I set that up. And I was hoping for that one to emerge and I was hoping to get video footage of that of the praying mantis emerging or the mantids emerging from that Uthika. Unfortunately, it happened to be a dud and I ended up getting nothing. It just sat there and it was just a dried up husk. So I had to throw that out. Um, as far as the mantids that did emerge, um, I had so many of them, I was overwhelmed. And I did what I had said that I was not going to do and I did release some of them. Uh, my bird thinks that he needs to be part of the show as well. Maybe I'll bring him in. But anyway, um, I went outside and I released some of them because they were eating each other. And, and you know, I was letting them call themselves out. Unfortunately, I just couldn't deal with all the, the cannibalism. So I did go outside and I let some loose. And um, the funny thing is a lot of the local lizards uh, gathered around and started eating them. So um, <laughs> the fears that I had that they would get big and eat the local uh, flora and fauna ended up being the reverse. Uh, the lizards ate most of them and I honestly don't know what happened to the rest because um, I haven't seen them. And I look frequently, I'm always looking for stuff to take pictures of and things. So uh, I would see some of them if they had still been around, but I did not see any of them. So I did have a few that I kept and uh, I was taking care of them, but I don't know what happened. I don't know what was going on, but maybe the temperatures in my house were too low or something, but they started dying off one by one. So again, I didn't want to kill them all. So I decided I'd let nature take its course and I took them outside and I released them. And I was hoping maybe I'd see them at you know, larger stages or anything like that but I've not seen hide nor hair of them since I released them. So hopefully maybe one or two will emerge somewhere, but up until today, I still have not seen a single one.
All right, so the next update I have is about the Asian Forest Scorpion. Um, a while back, I purchased uh, an Asian Forest Scorpion, and um, I, it was a very tiny Asian Forest Scorpion. And um, when I pur purchased it, it was right after I had purchased other scorpions, and they didn't survive. And I said, you know, that I'm not a scorpion guy. But um, many years ago, I did own several scorpions. In fact, I owned emperor scorpions. Um, and this was back in the time period when they were extremely cheap and readily available. Um, I remember that in reptile shows, you could find people would have a bin full of them and you can go in there and just pick out a bunch of them and they were like $10 a piece. So um, they, they were very, very inexpensive and you can find them all over. But something happened along the way and um, I believe they changed the laws on exportation and now they're being protected because of over um, uh, over collecting for the pet trade. And now they're a lot harder to find. You don't usually see emperor scorpions around very much at the pet shops and at the reptile shows. Um, what you do see now um, are the Asian forest scorpions and you also see um, another Pandina species, um, Pandinus dictator. And that's become the new emperor scorpion. But emperor scorpions are still available. They're just a lot more expensive than they were back then. You can't find them for $10 a piece anymore. I think they're usually running anywhere from, I've seen them about $40 all the way in, on up to about $100. So a big price difference from what they used to be. But that's what happens when scarcity occurs. Everybody wants what they can't have, so the prices go up. And um, But the Asian forest scorpion is also the replacement for the emperor scorpion. The, these became a lot more popular because they're a lot more readily available. But there's a problem with that. Um, there are many species of Asian forest scorpion, but they're being collected from all over Southeast Asia, but not really, they're not really taking consideration as to what species they are. So everything comes labeled as Asian forest scorpion, hence my intro there. And it's kind of hard to find out what you really have unless you know about scorpion anatomy and how to tell the difference between the different species of Asian forest scorpion. So um, I'm the kind of person that I like to know what I have. Um, I do like to breed. Uh, that, is a, that is something that is an intention of mine. So it's important to know what you have so that you don't have any hybridization going on or just so you don't end up putting two species together that are different and they might end up fighting or trying to kill each other um, and and that kind of did happen with the ones that I have now let me I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself let me go ahead and update you on my little Asian forest scorpion that I got and um, I purchased this at a true value hardware store believe it or not um, the ones that we have around here are kind of interesting places to go to because they sometimes sometimes they specialize in certain things. We've been to one that um, has a really neat nursery in it, has a lot of interesting plants, and we go to some that have other interesting things, and some of them even have pets. So this one had pets, and one of the pets that they had was an Asian forest scorpion. So um, it was really small. And like I said, it was after I had lost those other scorpions that I had. So I decided to try a shot with these and see how I did with them because um, uh, from what I understand, they're very similar to um, the emperor scorpions, which I was successful with, except these don't come from Africa. They come from Southeast Asia. So this is my um, Asian forest scorpion. And I was pretty happy because it had molted and now it's a little bit bigger than it used to be. So there it is. And um, not much to look at there. But one of the interesting things about Asian forest scorpions, I remember emperor scorpions being very docile and um, being able to pick them up. In fact, when I used to buy them, I used to just pick them up out of the bin and collect them. You know, they, these are the ones I want to buy and I'd put them they put them up for me in a in a container and I leave with them but um, Asian forest scorpions tend to be a little bit more defensive than the emperor scorpion 
So they're very alert and very quick and very quick to throw that little stinger at you. So um, this is my little guy right here looking pretty good. He's a little bit lighter in color there. He's almost a brownish color because of his recent molt. And I had saved the molt, but um, it got knocked down. The, the air wind blew it and it got knocked down and crushed so I couldn't keep it. But anyway, that is my little Asian forest scorpion. Here's a cool little thing about scorpions in general. I believe you can do this with any scorpion. Is that their um, exoskeleton fluoresces under a UV light or a black light. So I've got a little black light here, a little handheld black light. And I'm going to shine it over the scorpion. And you'll see it fluoresces a bluish color there. Alright, and it glows really bright when you put that UV light over it. So that's kind of an interesting thing about the Asian forest scorpions, emperor scorpions, actually any scorpion in general. Um, I remember back in my days when I was in the Air Force and we were out in the desert in Egypt and uh, we had a little handheld UV light that we could walk around with and we would find all kinds of scorpions at night using that UV light. But those fluoresced a bright yellow, whereas these are a greenish blue color. So I liked my Asian forest scorpion so much, I decided I was going to go back to the Ace Hardware and see if they had another one. And uh, sure enough, you know, a couple weeks after I'd gotten this one, they did have another one. And this one was actually bigger, so I bought it as well. And um, in fact, I ended up buying a third one. So, um, But this is why I brought this topic up is because... Um, it seems like, now I'm not sure about the little one, but these other two that I have are completely different species. So I want to show those to you and point out the differences between them. <clears throat> okay, so this is the second one I bought. And um, I had been getting into taking pictures of my um, collection, really. And um, this guy is very feisty and very quick to throw that stinger, um, as you can see. So um, I'm going to try to pull it out here. And it's pinching the heck out of these. This is a back scratcher, by the way. I picked up at Walmart for like $2. But I got to be careful with it because of the... Uh, the little tongs there or the, the, the tines on it, um, they can get their legs trapped in there. So I got to be real careful. All right, so let's get it out on the table here. Oh, it's taking off. All right, so here it is. If I can keep it in place. All right, and one of the things that I'd like to point out about it is that um, what, what I noticed was that the claws are actually known as the pedipalps. Come on. All right, let me see if I can control them a little bit better without getting stung. got his tail. Now, if you notice on his palps, he has a lot of beating going on on the palps right there. And they're also very uh, rounded at the top. Um, so they're not smooth at all. They're very rough. And those are rounded there at the top. So those claws look a lot different than the other Asian forest scorpion that I have. Now, um, I posted a picture of this on Facebook in one of my groups, and um, they actually believe that this might be an emperor scorpion. So um, I'm not sure. I, I'm very doubtful that it is because 
it was labeled as an Asian forest. It was sold to me as an Asian forest. However, um, anything's possible. I don't know where these came from or what, you know, what breeder or vendor or anything like that. So um, it, it, it might be possible that it is. Um, it has a lot of the same features as an Emperor Scorpion. Um, however, this one does tend to be a lot feistier than I remember Emperor Scorpions being. So um, it, it very well may not be. Um, but the same thing, you know, with these, they, they will fluoresce if you shine a light on them. Let me turn this one off so it's not, there we go. There we go. So they fluoresce really cool, like they're painted. All right, so this one again is an Asian forest scorpion, at least what I was told. I'm still trying to figure it out. I may look for a, a scorpion group that can help me a lot better. And I'll take some more detailed pictures of this particular species so that uh, maybe I could get a proper identification for it. All right, but um, yeah, you see he's very, very feisty, very quick to pinch. And I'm sure he'd sting the crap out of me if I wasn't holding on to his tail. So anyway, um, interesting thing, this guy was being kept in desert-like conditions. Um, I don't know if you can tell right there, there's some clay on his tail, um, and that's because he was put on like excavator clay or something like that that was really dry. Um, these are from uh, tropical regions and subtropical regions, so they need a lot of humidity. So more than likely it would have died if it would have stayed there at that uh, store for a long period of time. All right, so let's look at the next one. Okay, this next one I know for a fact is an Asian forest scorpion. Um, and I forgot to mention the genus of that. And that is Heterometris. And um, so the only thing is, as I don't know what species it is. Um, and I'll pull this one out so you can get a good look at it. Um, strangely enough, this one is a little bit less defensive than the previous one. So I'm gonna pull it out. So we can get a good look at it. Whoop, it just almost flipped up on me. All right, now if you notice um, on the claws for this one, um, this one has very smooth claws. I don't know if you can see that. The claws are very smooth and they're not as beaded as the claws of the previous one. So um, this leads me to believe that it actually is a heterometris. Um, this is more typical of those, the, those particular um, Asian forest scorpions. Um, and the fact that the, um, the stinger or the telson, um, on the other one the telson was a light tan color, on this one it's a solid black. So that is a telltale sign that this is definitely an Asian forest scorpion. Um, like I said, it's not as defensive as the previous one, which is kind of ironic considering that um, the Pandinus Imperator, Imperator uh, the Emperor Scorpion, tends to be a little bit more docile than the Asian forest. But in this case, these guys are um, a little bit more docile than the, um, than the other ones. So uh, like I said, I'm not really sure if it is an Emperor Scorpion, but it, that's just what people have been telling me based on what they saw. So yeah, this one, um, definitely Heterometris. Um, I suspect it might be Spinifer or Petersi, or I don't know if you pronounce that Petersi, but um, it, I believe it's one of those two, which is typically what you're, you're gonna find in the, um, in the pet trade. So um, I've never handled this one. Uh, a little bit worried about it. You know, I, I've never been stung by, by an Emperor Scorpion or an Asian Forest Scorpion. Um, their venom is relatively mild, so it's just gonna sting a little bit and cause some swelling, but nothing major, just like a bee sting or a wasp sting. So, um, again, I'm not really too concerned about it. But yeah, really cool species. Um, again, just to show you how they glow, there you go.
it's just a neat thing. Um, a lot of people that do keep, um, it, you know, back in the day, Emperor Scorpions or Asian Forest Scorpions, um, sometimes they'll put them under a black light and keep them under a black light. And that's not recommended that they're getting UV rays all the time. So you don't want to do that. It might be cool to look at them a little bit um, under the black light just to see them fluoresce. But for the most part, it's not something that you want to do permanently. So there you go, pretty docile. Um, it, it'll walk around on my hand like that. Um, it may pinch me if it decides that it wants to um, no longer be there. But for the most part, it's just gonna walk around and chill. Fun stuff. So one last note about the Asian forest scorpion is as far as feeding is concerned, I feed mine roaches. Um, you can feed them mealworms, superworms, roaches, crickets, usually whatever feeder insect is out there, they will pretty much eat that is within their size range, of course. Um, they also tend to be kind of picky eaters, or at least shy eaters. Um, I have, in, in my experience at least, um, I haven't been able to see any of them eat personally. They, they will eat in secret. Um, I'll try to feed them. They'll pinch the prey, but then they'll let it go. And most of the time, they're usually being defensive with me and not necessarily trying to eat the prey. So I'll leave it in the enclosure, and then later on, it'll just just be gone so I know they're eating because they're getting fatter and they're molting and all that kind of stuff but as far as me actually observing them eat I have yet to see that um, maybe one day I'll get lucky and capture it and I'll show it to you but that's why I didn't have anything to show you as far as feeding was concerned so that's it for me today I hope you enjoyed it Next week, I plan to have a special guest on my channel. At least he's special to me. Um, and the topic should be very interesting. Hopefully, if all works out, we'll be able to shoot that this week. And uh, I'll have it ready for you for next weekend. So that's something to look forward to. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Redbubble store. And I'll post a link down below. All the proceeds from the Redbubble store will go directly to support and grow this channel. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.